So let's begin with our first song, My Country, Tis of Thee. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Long may our land be bright with freedom's holy light. Protect us by thy might, great God, our King. I'm going to stay on that one. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountainside, let freedom ring. And now the prayer. Our fathers, God, to thee, author of liberty, to thee we sing. Long may our land be bright with freedom's holy light. Protect us by thy might, great God, our King. And amen to that. Beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountains, majesties above the fruited plain. America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood proceed to shine. shining sea oh beautiful for pilgrim feet whose stern impassioned stress a thoroughfare for freedom beat across the wilderness America America, God mend thine every flaw, confirm thy soul in self-control, thy liberty in law. <laughs> divine hath led us in the past in this free land by thee our lot is cast be thou a ruler guardian guide and stay thy word our law thy paths our chosen way Refresh thy people on their toilsome way. Lead us from night to never-ending day. Fill all our lives with love and grace divine. And glory lies. And praise be ever thine. Now we're going to do the battle hymn of the Republic, a couple of verses of it. If you haven't noticed, it's Memorial Weekend. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He hath loosed the fateful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. 
Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. I have seen him in the watchfires of a hundred circling camps. They have builded him an altar in the evening dews and damps. I can read his righteous sentence by the dim and flaring lamps. His day is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah, His truth is marching on. Why should I worry or fret? We're moving into the faith end of this uh, at this point, but there's a faith end in all those hymns that we just sang. They're good for us to remember and live by. Should I worry or fret? He holds the future in the palm of his hand, and he has never failed me yet. I know he's reigning and he's still in control, so why should I worry or fret? I know he holds the future, and I know he holds my hand. I know just as sure as I'm singing this song, I'm a part of his almighty plan. I believe, I believe, I believe, so why should I worry or fret? And then let's move to I will worship you. My God is faithful, my God is truthful, my God is boundless in all He is. My God is wisdom, my God is righteous, my God is vision for all who seek, so I will worship you. In the beauty of holiness and I will worship you for the things you've done in me and when my life's complete I lay my crown at your feet and I will worship you on bended knee my God is power my God is glory my God is ruler over all that is. My God is timeless. My God is justice. My God is mercy to the oppressed. So I will worship you in the beauty of holiness. And I will worship you for the things you've done in me. And when my life's complete, I place my crown at your feet, and I will worship you on bended knee. His name is love, his force is thunder, his heart is tender, and his hand is strong. So I will worship you in the beauty of holiness and I will worship you for the things you've done in me and when my life's complete I place my crown at your feet and I will worship you I will worship you my King 
I will worship you on bended knee. Amen. Thank you all up here. Appreciate your help. I want to, is this on where you're hearing? Is it too soft or is it too loud? I asked that once, and a guy at the back said, I can't hear, and the guy in front said, I can. You want to swap seats? <laughs> Just never know what you're going to get it from that way. We welcome those of you who are online with us. and glad to have you sharing in this time of worship. Uh, it's an important part of our service that we include people. We learned to do this when we didn't have any other way to meet, <laughs> and we started as it were, some kind of a telecast or something uh, of the service. Let's pray for just a moment, and then I want to talk about why Memorial Day, just exactly what it's about for us. Father, we come to you, as always, seeking your will, not what we want, not what we think will make things work good for us, but just simply what you want that will make us part of your will and part of serving you as we should be doing. Bless us now as we take a look at this special kind of a day in our country's life and a special kind of day in our lives. Bless us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. American Memorial Day is the beginning of summer holidays. I noticed they opened the swimming pool down in our area the other day. Uh, we observe the day by having flags placed out on graves of veterans. Uh, we remember the price that was paid for liberty. I may say this more than once. Freedom is not free. It is not free. And so we go into Memorial Day as a memory of what has taken place so that this country can exist. Now, there is a somber undertone to the day, despite the fact that it's become a thing that's loaded up with all kinds of extra things, cookouts, picnics, sports, games, auto races. Uh, sailboat regattas, if you've ever lived near a lake, you know they do that. And also, there is a somber undertone to the day, if we look at it in a right way. In the last 12 years, this day that is supposed to honor those who've fallen in battle, buying the price, paying the price for freedom, they, we have what I would call militant atheizers. That's atheists who are out to convert people. And they've gained the privileged access to our Defense Department. I never thought that I would see a general stand before the public in America wearing a skirt, unless he was Scottish. <laughs> The anesthetizers boast that they are making progress toward a goal. They want to open things up to where Christianity, Christianity has no expression in the armed services. Don't you miss that? That's going on. They demand that anyone in uniform who shares his faith, who tries to proselytize, be disciplined severely or kicked out of the service. Americans, if we really take things right and get things right, should be involved with the same kind of an attitude that another generation had, and that generation is almost gone. The great World War II generation, they fought 
They fought a two-front world war to preserve our freedom and to give us the right to be able to carry the gospel. I have relatives who've gone to see Normandy and to see the American cemetery there. And I've looked at the pictures they brought back and it's row upon row upon row upon row of Americans who sacrificed their lives. There are crosses, innumerable ones almost. And there are also, mixed in among them, stars of David as a memorial. Let's remember that they fought doubly. They fought for their, their people and they fought for their country, both. We need to get the context of that in mind as we come into Memorial Day. That's what it's about. If religious symbols stand to mark it. It is a day in which religion should be important in our lives. And God bless every soldier. My, my family went to war and all of them came home. And I'm thankful for that. That's great. But so many didn't. And we remember that because the other people paid a price in all kinds of horror and terror and having their life on the line. And then there are those who paid with their life. But it cost. It cost something. That's the point. Now, I want to contrast what we're talking about. Honoring the deceased and so forth. I want to put it into context of what happened maybe a decade ago. There was a Jew-hating army psychiatrist and he was allowed to sound off about jihad and he did that his name was major nidal hassan he openly advocated islamic violence against americans who were jewish those who protested were ordered to be silent and let him continue doing it do you understand that? That's the way that it went first. And then he worked out his murderous theology. He took the lives of 14 innocent human beings, counting one unborn child who was shot. And he did it at the end of spewing out his hateful ideology. And then everybody stepped up and said, Oh, poor man, he's just following through with what he believes. They're nuts. They absolutely are. Because what our military is supposed to be about is not being court-martialed because you hold up the faith of Jesus, but because Christian soldiers make some of the very best soldiers. Someone opened the gate to real sedition and mass murder when that man cut loose with a gun at Fort Hood. Atheizers weren't coming around to silence what Nadal Hassan said. They were coming around telling everybody to quit talking about Jesus and quit trying to convert someone. That's how political correctness works. It's a beautiful concept, really. Do you get the irony that my voice has in it? Because they want to suppress the faith of Christians. Turn around the policies we have that once made us a faithful ally of the only faithful ally we have in the Middle East. And right now, they're trying to do that. When you see these people demonstrating, they are holding a religious demonstration against a nation. Now, the Jewish people are not God's chosen people anymore. They can be if they know Jesus. God's chosen people are Jesus followers.
face that, know that. But understand, those guys over there are on our side, and there aren't many people in the world that are. What are they doing on the campuses? Have you heard them say this? From the river to the sea. From the river to the sea. You know what that means? It's not saying come view the scenery. It's saying take all of Israel and shove it into the ocean and let them die. That's what it says. That's the meaning. Don't let them kid you. And they just over and over do it. We are going to remember people who fought and died so that people could express their faith, could live out their faith in this land. Memorial Day is to honor those who died on fields of battle. Other meanings are taken for Memorial Day, but the purpose of Memorial Day for us must always be to remember those who gave their lives so we could be free and so that we could not have anyone tell us that we couldn't have our religion, that we couldn't serve our God. You see, they cannot establish a religion. They must give freedom to religion. That's the Constitution of the United States. Go get a copy. So, the purpose of Memorial Day for us as Christians is to remember there is a God and we have the privilege of serving Him. And we have the privilege of working our way through all of the troubles and the trials that it takes in order to serve Him. And in order to reach out into a world that's lost without Him. Husbands left their wives. Fathers have left their little children. Sons have left their families. For everyone that has done that and lost their lives, that's what Memorial Day is for. It's for the person who still is in a white ward of a mental hospital because his mind was torn from its moorings by the terror of war, the injury of war. For every man whose life blood colored the white sands of an island beach or the muddy bottom of a foxhole or the ocean's inky, inky depth or the sky's cold blue air who died in a tank turret or a gun emplacement or a crowded cockpit, a landing craft, a ship's deck, a submarine's cramped quarters or a helicopter's bottle deck. For every man, for the legions of men who gave everything, that's what Memorial Day is for. And it is something that we should thank our God for those people that he could use, those brave men and women, to fight and to keep freedom where we can go with the gospel throughout the world at our own risk in most countries, but can go. We must reaffirm our gratitude. We remember them. We remember them. Do you know where Memorial Day started? It started in the South. It started during the Civil War, 1863. You see, that's right in the middle of things. There was a group of women who went out in Columbus, Mississippi, to place flowers on the graves of those who had been killed in combat. And they were thinking of relatives from the Army of Virginia, actually. And they went out and honored those who had died at Shiloh in Corinth. I can't say that word without almost crying because my relative died fighting that war in Corinth, Mississippi. Stone River. Elderly women were decorating the graves and this woman put some flowers on her two sons' grave. And then she walked over to the edge of the cemetery where there were two mounds without a headstone. And she began putting flowers on those mounds. And another woman yelled, those are Yankees! Don't put flowers on those graves! And she said, someplace there is a mother 
or a wife or a sweetheart of them who would like to be able to place flowers on their grave and never will be able to. And I want to honor them because someday this war will be over and the heroes of the South and the unknown soldiers of the North will have peace again. In 1867, the New York Tribune printed what took place in that churchyard. In 1868, General Logan, the national commander of the Grand Army of the Republic, issued an order making the 30th day of May a day set aside for decorating graves for all who had fallen in war. That's Memorial Day. In a torn and troubled world, it's a message that is needed. We need to honor people that way. We need to love people that way. As a Christian, I'd like to just run a few principles by you that might be of helpful. The day is to reminisce. It's to recall other nights and other days. It's to remember happy moments, the fellowship of the missing. It's to remember real people, though. Keep that in mind as you do it. You can't. Remember them into heaven. You must not remember the bad. You must not remember only the good. We need to learn to accept that as a part of life. And in God's plan, if they were right with God, you can talk with them in heaven. Don't place them in heaven. Don't judge them to hell. But pray that every soldier and every person lives well so that they will hear God someday say, well done. Make reminiscence as joyful as you possibly can because we're talking about people who will be among the living in heaven if they belong to Jesus. Get it? Tennyson wrote, Sunset and evening star and one clear call for me. And may there be no moaning at the bar when I go out to sea. Twilight and evening bell, and after that the dark. And may there be no sadness of farewell when I embark. For th from out our... From, from out our hour of time and place... The flood may take you far, and I hope to see the pilot face to face when I have crossed the bar. That's what it's about, is looking to eternity. Sorry, I lost that. I lost that passage when I recited it in high school for a grade. <laughs> we reminisce. We honor our dead. It's a good idea to decorate graves. We've spread that out to everybody. We make it a time in which we cherish not just the fact that they are placed there because they are not there. They are going to be resurrected. We will be resurrected to a resurrection of the living, honoring the living God or to a place of judgment. It's better to place a nice wreath and go on your way, but I could suggest something else. I had a lady in my church who lost her son early on in Vietnam. And she came to me and she said, I want to do something in his honor. I said, well, what did you have in mind? She said, I don't know. What, what can I do? I said, you want a living memorial? She said, yes. I said, okay. I know that there are preacher boys who go to the college up the road from us. And if they don't get help, some of them will not finish and become preachers. Would you like to help them? She did that the rest of her life. Help pay tuition for young men as a living memorial to her son who had passed. Honor our dead. Honor our war dead. The basic purpose of Memorial Day is that, again, that's true. 
if they had not gone out and done what they did, we would be speaking German or Japanese. They went out and defended this country. Hitler only was going to take over Czechoslovakia. Mussolini was only going to take over Ethiopia. He wouldn't go any further, but he would, and he did. We need to realize that there are places where we have to fight to stop. We need to stop the dictators. We need to stop the fascists. We need to stop the jihadists. We need to stop the communists. We need, yea, even to stop the socialists. That needs to be done because every one of those is opposed to Christianity. I speak not just as a patriot, but as a Christian. God intends for us to fight battles if necessary. You remember a guy named John the Baptist? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What, 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 what about him? What about him? When the soldiers came to him, they said, what do we need to do so that we can be right with God and we can be right with the Messiah? And he said, live a good, honest life, basically, is what he told them. You don't have to quit being a soldier, was what he told them. In the first century, do you know how the gospel got to every part of the Roman world? On the sandaled feet of the Roman army. They converted... And the message went with them just as it should with every one of us. We need Memorial Day to show that life's short. It is appointed man wants to die. And after this comes judgment. Life is short. <laughs> Dorothy and I have that conversation almost daily. <laughs> Where does time go? Where does the time go? I know I look it, I know I walk like it, but I don't really feel like I'm 80 years old. It goes by fast. It really does blow by. We need to use our time wisely so that we are prepared. I have a favorite little poem of mine, and I use it frequently at funerals, particularly among people that I really like. I call it to their attention. Are you ready? to die. When we meet together at a funeral, we are meeting together because of one thing. That's death. We meet together to honor people and to console people. But we meet because of death. There was a stone, an actual stone in London, England that had this on it. Friend, stop to think as you pass by. As you are now, so once was I. As I am now, soon you will be. So prepare for death and follow me. It made news when some wag came in and wrote in chalk underneath that. To follow you, I'm not content until I know which way you went. <laughs> Life is short. We need to follow those who know the way the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ. And one other thing that I would call to your attention. It's a time to remember Jesus' death. The most precious person ever to walk the earth died for us. And we have freedom from sin and hope of eternal life and freedom from an everlasting hell that is burning even as we speak. God would have us never forget He lost His only Son. I actually had a woman ask me that. She said, Why? Why was my son killed? Where was God when my son was killed by that drunk driver? And I said, The only thing I knew to say, He was the same place where He was when Jesus died on the cross.
Jesus died for us. We need to realize that burial is very temporary. The resurrection is inevitable and it is eternal. We need to live remembering Jesus was resurrected from the dead. We need to live remembering Jesus' death, His faithfulness to the end as our example. And we then need to look for a great day to come because the next big Memorial Day, people, is coming. It will come. And I've lost my New Testament. But I always have a Bible handy. <laughs> In 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, I want us to think in terms of something that's important for us. In the fourth chapter, the 13th verse, it says, May God strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God the Father when the Lord Jesus comes with all His holy ones. Got that? That's pretty important. And then in verses 13 through 18 of the fourth chapter. Brothers, I do not want you to be ignorant about those who've fallen asleep or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe God will bring with Jesus those who've fallen asleep in Him. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are alive who are left until the coming of our Lord will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord Himself will come down from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And after that, we who are still alive and left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall always be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The grave isn't the end. There is a judgment and there is a Savior who will take us to eternal life. If we skip down to the ninth verse, maybe the eighth verse would be good. It describes the times and seasons that he was talking about. Since we belong to the day, let us be self-controlled, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. I love to read this at graveside. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we shall live together with Him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up with these words, just as in fact you are doing. That, my friends, that, my friends, is what Memorial Day is about. We don't plant them because we've lost them. We plant them because with them we are going to rise to meet the armies of God coming on white horses, I guess. Jesus is riding one. And the army doesn't have to fight because the whole fight will be won by Jesus because from His mouth comes a sharp two-edged sword, the Word of God. And with that, He wins the battle. And He wins all of those who would walk with Him in this life and prepare for that life that is to come upon His return. And I have only this to say. Even so, Lord Jesus, come. Even so, Lord Jesus, come. That's Scripture. That's our hope. That's what Memorial Day ultimately is about.
We're going to extend an invitation. If anyone needs to make a decision, if you're out there online, you can do it by contacting the one of our numbers, the prayer request number or the decision or whichever number you might get a hold of. You'll get to the same office <laughs> and you'll get the same response back. We'd be happy to help you make a decision. If you're here and you want to make a decision for Jesus Christ, if you want to give your heart to Him, if you want to have the saints pray for you, if you need something particularly in your life, this is an opportunity to do that publicly. If that seems to be your need, we want you to come to Jesus. Softly and tenderly is what we're looking at here. It says Jesus is calling. But... Let's try it a cappella. If you can find it in the book, you can join us on the second verse. <laughs> softly and tender, Jesus is... Softly and tenderly... This is not the song that I practiced. <laughs> Come home, come home, ye who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, O sinner, come home. Why should we tarry? When Jesus is pleading, pleading for you and for me, why should we linger and heed not his mercies, mercies for you and for me? Sorry, I couldn't recognize the chorus without singing the verse first. <laughs> We're going to meet around the Lord's table. You talk about a memorial. This is the memorial. This is the memorial of a lifetime. This is the memorial of this present moment. This is the memorial that Jesus went to the cross for our sins. If you don't have communion, you raise your, raise your hand, somebody will bring it to you. Hello, heads up in the communion delivery. <laughs> There's a couple of hands up down front here. We have the privilege of taking the Lord's Supper. Jesus left this for us. He met with His disciples. They were in a a special rented room, no doubt. And there, Jesus explained this. He said of the bread, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. As we partake of this, we are partaking of Jesus' body and the death that he died for us on the cross. His body was not only abused and broken, but as a result of that, His blood was shed. And it says simply in the Old Testament, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Jesus died so that we have a covenant with God that we can approach our God in purity in Jesus' blood. I say much the same thing 
every time we share together because this is the most important part of our faith that we share right now. Let's sing the communion song now, if we could. It is the wonderful cross. We have two groups of our discipleship yet to meet this week. And ladies, when you gather, come to party. <laughs> this is a kind of a break week, and they recommend it when you spend so much time with so much that's serious and so much that's important, and you've been blessed by it, that you just share a time of joy together with others. If you have games to suggest to Dorothy, talk with her about it. You, can, you can't come in and shoot craps. I just won't have that. <laughs> but, but you can play games and have a good time and uh, agree on some refreshments and finding a way to let the kids get turned loose all over the place. And, have a good time. And then uh, on Thursday, we will discuss what we're going to do, and we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to enjoy each other's fellowship for just a little bit. That's what this time of discipleship has been. It, it is relational discipleship, and it's intended to give you insight into the lives of your friends and for you to be able to pour into their lives and vice versa. And it is, there may be a better program, but I don't know one for getting close to people in the Lord because you do it on the basis of the Word of God and your common faith in Jesus Christ. It's a, it's a true blessing. And I would like to have those of you who participate in this as we get ready to start up again the full-blown program maybe with another group or two even but we get ready to start up again i want some of you to be willing to give a testimony of how you've been blessed by being in this group in this setting it it's really potent i will say this one more thing and then um, conclude the service, but Dorothy and I flew to Denver to be able to attend the training session for this. We had no earthly idea how it was going to be handled. They put us in a group of at least 15 people. I think sometimes 20 were in that group. And we shared and talked about what blessing we were receiving from a scripture lesson that we were discussing. We did the first day and we came away and we said, that was good. That was really good. We had a couple of sessions and it was good. I came in the, the second day just a tad late getting in. And there Dorothy is and they're just opening her heart and sharing with everybody. And she's kind of a quiet lady. <laughs> but it didn't bother her that she was among those people because we had already started bonding with them the day before. 
And I stepped in there and I said, praise God. I ask you for a sign, Lord. <laughs> That's it. And I found it profoundly, deeply moving to know people from all over the country that we shared with in that kind of a communion setting. That's my little testimony, but we'll have some other people give testimony about it. It's, it's a, it doesn't sound too great to you. It sounds like a, a thing that's really kind of different, and it is kind of different. But it's kind of like what the disciples did back in Jesus' day. Jesus had a little group, three, and he had a group of twelve that the three were included in. And those are the people he mostly worked with. And then he had a few women that he worked with. See, there's your first women's meeting. <laughs> but that was, that was the way he taught. He made disciples of them. And that's what we're supposed to be and be doing. And thank you for the commercial time out. God bless you. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this country, for what it's been able to do in reaching out into a world of people who are staggered by the ugliness of mankind. Thank you, Father, for what we've been able to do as the church reaching out in our society and all around. Help us, Father, to do a better job for you touching the lives of other people. We are grateful, Father, for the men, women who sacrificed, and especially for those who even died, to protect this land of freedom and a land where religion is free. Bless us to that end that that may be true as much as it once was. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I've got a long, long way to journey. My life is not my own. I've got a lot of places I must go before God calls me home. I've got to go tell it on the mountain. I've got to go tell it in the street I've got to go, go, go tell everybody Why Jesus is so sweet And that's an appropriate song because it was written by a veteran 